Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, Reactions. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. Welcome to another reaction video. There's a lot to react to. Uh, Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, was previewed today, was revealed in a, in a prestigious 7 a.m reveal over at Wizards of the Coast. I was kind of asleep, plus I didn't get my invitation for some reason. I guess it got lost in the mail. I guess next time, Wizards, I'm around. Um, but let's talk about all the things that got revealed and my particular takes on it. And let's see what you think about it too. Don't forget to comment below the video. Tell me what you thought about the new reveals for Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths. Okay, so first up, it's the, uh, it's the preview trailer. Um, as of this recording, it has six and a half million views. I'm just gonna jump around a little bit. There's a whole bunch of big old monsters attacking some place. Really good uh, computer graphics uh, on par with the new stuff that they've been doing. And then we have Vivian Reed, my girl Vivian Reed, just appearing, strutting in. Um, totally sure of herself and her powers. And uh, again, great animation here. Um, she calls some behemoths and stuff, and all the while it's playing this copyrighted song, but, uh, it's a, uh, that one, I don't give a darn about my bad reputation song. We all know which one it is. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool action-packed two and a half minutes. It seems way more fun than the previous ones that have been revealed recently. Oh no, it's gonna get her. Oops, never mind. The other creature got that creature. That behemoth got that behemoth. Uh, so it seems a lot more fun than the other um, than the other trailers that have been out, especially the uh, Theros Beyond Death one was like very epic and very scary, and it's on par with some of their best animation that they've been doing recently. And then we get this epic reveal right here. Gojira, King of the Monsters, is now a magic card. Godzilla is officially in magic. Sort of. We'll see what that means in a moment. But the tagline, there's always a bigger monster. And now we've got Godzilla as part of the world of Magic the Gathering. What does that mean? It means a lot of things. So let's keep on reacting to some of these new things that have been revealed. There's the mechanics. Okay, there's a bunch of new mechanics. Some new, some old. Okay, one of the returning ones is cycling. Basically, if you've never played with cycling before, you can pay some amount of mana to instantly get rid of this card and draw another card. So you may uh, have a particular card that is not that good at the moment, and then later uh, it is good, or it, depending on your time, you can cycle it away and perhaps draw a better card after that. Here's an example, Dranith Stinger. This is a creature, a human wizard for two mana, one and a red, and you get a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, or you can cycle it for, for one mana, one generic mana, and you draw another card. Whenever you cycle another card, this card deals one damage to each opponent. So it's sort of like a gutter snipe sort of thing, but only when you cycle cards. So if you've already got one of these on the field, and this is a common, and you cycle another one of these stingers, you can then do one damage to all opponents. So cycling is returning. Cycling had returned recently in Historic Anthology 2 on Magic Arena. You could uh, see it in all of those lands, those lands that cycled like Baron Moor and uh, Lonely, Lonely Sandabar. And so here we have more cycling cards returning in Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths. Here's another thing that's really interesting. Uh, keyword counters? So you can put plus one counters on things, and these things are sort of like that, but they are they are keyword counters. For example, target creature, here's fully grown. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Put the trample counter onto it. So you're giving a creature plus three until end of turn, but then you're giving it trample permanently as a counter. If you have a way to interact with counters, as in removing them, okay, you can remove trample from it. It's not like an enchantment, like an aura. It's a counter, which in theory, you can proliferate these counters. Um, you cannot have like double trample or quadruple strike or whatever. Um, double hex proof, double lifelink. But you can proliferate these counters if you want. 
and maybe even move them around if you have the right cards that can handle that mechanic or remove counters as well. So we have counters for all of these things. Menace counters, reach, lifelink, etc. And you're going to get a little punch card when you get real life cards. Remember those archaic things? So when you get real life cards, you'll get some of these in the pack, just like with the uh, Amon Ket block, you know, brick counters and neg one counters and so forth. It's a little punch card uh, for you to collect or to put onto your uh, to your creatures that have these things like death touch, flying, etc. So it's a variation on counters plus an aura enchantment pretty interesting next up okay here's the mechanic that was hinted at in unsanctioned mutate so it is basically the black border version of augment there was host and augment there was a card that you a creature that you cast and then you could augment onto it to make it a brand new creature with more abilities well this is the black border version this is the real magic version of this for example cloud piercer this is five mana in total to get you a 5-4 with reach. However, if you mutate it for four, uh, you kind of attach this on top of or below another creature, and then you make a new super creature. So reading it here specifically, if you cast this spell for its mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top, plus all abilities from under it. So you attach this to a Llanowar Elf, and now you have a Cloud Piercer Llanowar Elf hybrid, uh, which is a 5-4 with a tap ability to give you one green mana, as well as reach, as well as the whenever this creature mutates, you may discard a card if you do, so the impulse draw sort of thing. Or you can do the opposite, you put the, uh, the, the creature on, on top of it, below it, however you want, their stats sort of line up, combine into a new thing, mutation. Uh, apparently, from what I understand here, you can have as many mutations as you want. Mark Ro Rosewater has challenged us to, make the, to send them the photo of the biggest mutation you can ever create. So here's another example. Uh, this is two different creatures, Cloud Piercer and Mo uh, Moss Coat Goriak. Um, so Cloud Piercer on top makes you a 5-4 with Vigilance and Reach, or Moss Coat on top gives you a 2-4 with Vigilance and Reach plus that cycle. So a couple of ways to do that. And this is the this is the newest thing, and you can do a lot of wacky things. Okay, what about with Zagoth Mamba? And these creature types are pretty amazing as well. Nightmare Snake. Whenever this creature mutates, target creature and opponent controls gets minus two. Uh, until end of turn. So the more you put on top of this Mamba, the more minus two counters you put on another creature. And notice you can only mutate on non-humans. So attach this to a non-human creature. Humans cannot mutate. Only creatures can mutate. And we're going to get a variety of interesting creatures. Creature types. We've seen dinosaur, beast, and nightmare snake. There's a uh, demon kraken, I think, and nightmare squirrel or whatever. There's just so many interesting things. There's a boar. Okay, so it's a lot of behemoths. Uh, that's that's the big idea with that particular mechanic. Here's another one. This is totally wacky. This is a brand new companion. This is really messing with like the area of commander and brawl in that you have like an extra card in another zone that can interact with your main deck. Let's look at Karuga, the Macro Sage. This is a dinosaur hippo with three and then two Simic mana, either green or blue mana. So you can pay that however you want, this hybrid mana. You get a 5-4. If you ignore Companion, when Karuga, the Macro Sage, enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with CMC of three or greater. So you summon this creature and you draw cards for the other big creatures in the deck. Well, how do we guarantee that we've got big creatures? Well, here's where Companion comes into play. Companion, your starting deck contains, I wish they kind of worded, must have worded, I think they, they, I wish they would have worded it like, your starting deck must contain. I think it would have gotten the point across that like this is something you have to do if, if you do companion. Because technically you don't have to care about the companion part of things. But if you do care about the companion part of the creature, you get a little bonus. Okay, but here's the stipulation. Your starting deck contains only cards with CMC 3 or greater and land cards. If this card 
is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. So you put it in a zone outside the game, and I've I've seen here that it that's in your sideboard, but there's no sideboards in Commander or Brawl, but it's still outside the game. And so you have like this card always available to cast if you meet the condition. It's always in your hand, in your outside of the area uh, part of your deck. And if you have followed the companion stipulation, then you're able to summon Karuga. Once you bring Karuga in, summon Karuga, then you get those card draws from those other creatures. So it says uh, for each other creature. Yeah, for each other creature that's three CMC or larger. Now when it dies, it goes back to the graveyard. It, goes, it can get shuffled back to the library. It can be exiled, but it doesn't go back to that original starting zone. So there's still a lot of little nuances about this, but this is already causing waves in the world of non-standard formats. And it's it's playing with a different kind of a zone. Again, fascinating design space uh, with these cards in Ikoria uh, that we're starting to see. Really interesting stuff. So read the article yourself. It's going to be linked in this video. Uh, watch that video yourself as well. The trailer, if you haven't, I'll put it in my video here. But let's talk about a, a few other reactions. We have the Planeswalker's Guide to Ikoria. Now, this is written by Chris Mooney. Not really. It was dictated to Chris Mooney by uh, Vivian Reed, actually. So she was uh, traversing the multiverse, and she came to Ikoria, and she's uh, talking about the various monsters and zones or areas of this new land. So look at this freaky, freaky creature. And uh, beautiful art as usual. This is by Jesper Ising. And... Um, what are the humans up to? These are the so-called civilized species. Uh, some of them can bond with the with the uh, creatures and they get bonuses and so forth. So here's a cool looking character right here. She's so got a badass bear. Uh, this is by Magali Villeneuve. Uh, yeah, just humans are still in this uh, in this plane. I kind of really like their style of clothing and and that sort of thing, and that they are bonded with other creatures. Now we've got triomes. I guess biomes is too earth-like. Triomes, because this must mean this is a either a, a wedge or a shard uh, world. I believe it was a, a wedge world. It's three colors of mana and one is like the enemy color. And so triomes. Again, this article is pretty cool because it talks about, okay, here's the Savai. Uh, they haven't quite revealed what colors are in it. Uh, but the dominant monster, Clade, are cats. So here we're going to see grassy plains atop mountainous. Okay, they gave it away here. We've got uh, plains, mountains, and swamps. Okay, there we go. So the old name of whatever the shard was, now we're going to start calling it the Savai. And we're going to have cat creatures in here. So really cool art as always. Here's by Siddharth Chartu Verdi. And uh, cats, so this is the this is the triome that I'm gonna care about because look at these amazing cat cards that we're gonna have as part of the part of the set. Snapdax, the all hunter, amazing. Put him on my squad, and then Seb McKinnon artwork in these amazing. Um, uh, this looks like a, a playmat uh, sort of uh, shape, but Seb McKinnon artwork is is gonna do some of this like kind of alternate art, I suppose. I totally approve. And then Dranith is the invincible city in this particular triome. And the article again just goes on to tell you really good detail, really good lore. Uh, very interesting uh, article you should check out. We've got Ketria. This is rivers and waterfalls and forests and mountains and such. So elementals are here. So I'm just going to zoom by it. We've got these elemental birds and we got an elemental otter, which is causing a big splash, pun intended, uh, in the world of Commander. Uh, so beautiful art, interesting Ilunia, the wish giver, just really interesting artwork, mechanics, a great world to exist in, just beautiful art. It's so luminous. I love this. So again, this article will be in my video. Check it out yourself for the full details. Next up, we're going to have collector boosters. So love them or hate them, uh, collector boosters are going to return. They're like the totally premium product. Booster fun is in full swing. We're going to have a one foil or non-foil Godzilla monster series. So yes, the Godzilla characters are in Magic the Gathering. Uh, we will see how in a moment. So there's going to be one of them. They could be foil or non-foil. We're going to have a, a foil showcase card or borderless planeswalker. So the new showcase cards is art style that's more cartoony. So I like that. I like that they're kind of doing this more 
non-realistic style like back in my day when I played in the 90s so I totally approve of that and they have some of those in these boosters. We get a foil rare or mythic which has a chance to upgrade to foil extended art. One non-foil showcase rare or mythic, one non-foil extended art rare or mythic, one non-foil Ikoria commander card uh, from the commander decks, two non-foil showcase common or uncommons, two foil uncommons, four foil commons or a land, and one foil basic land and one foil token. So totally blinged out. Uh, it looks like it's one of the most over-the-top collector booster offerings. We've had one, of course, with Throne of Eldraine and then uh, Theros Beyond Death. And now here we continue with Ikoria, Layer of Behemoth. So more of that bling for your thing. Here's what there's going to look like. So um, this is the... Uh, this is the showcase treatment again a lot a lot more cartoony style uh, not but but still very detailed it's just in a different kind of style uh, here for example the planeswalkers this is by kev walker uh doing uh vivian's monsters advocate so very cool cartoonier style that i enjoy uh then we're gonna have the godzilla type of uh, alternate art. So Mothra, Supersonic Queen. Mothra is a character now in the world of magic, but if we look closely here, this is a variant. Now I, I deal with a lot of comic books, that's my other big hobby, so I know all about variants. Uh, but this is like a variant magic card because this is this is luminous brood moth but with another alternate art which is mothra now this is just f uh, like a flavor text name the real name of this card is luminous brood, uh, brood moth so even the godzilla card is also another card but just the art and the frame and such is different uh, so there are uh, 19 Godzilla series monster cards. There's a buy a box promo. There's a Japanese exclusive one. And so we've got all of these. We've got all of this new stuff that, that you might be interested in. Uh, Commander is also going to have extended art cards. And this is to treat yourself. So Project Booster Fun, just a lot of variation on what type of cards you can have for your various decks. Magic players love variations on their decks, especially Commander decks. So uh, that's in full effect here in the new Ikoria set. A couple of other interesting things to react to. An official statement on Space Godzilla. So first of all, I'm like, Space Godzilla in a magic set? Again, these particular Godzilla cards are the same as the real card. It's just a different alternate art. Okay, but here's what's interesting. Originally, when this set was designed months ago, there was a card called Space Godzilla Death Corona. Well, now in the days of the COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, apocalypse, whatever, this is in poor taste. Death Corona. Well, Wizards has said they are going to rename the uh, this particular card, Space Godzilla Void Invader, because that was the original name of it anyway. Again, the original version of this card is Void Beckoner. But then the fun version, the Godzilla version, is Space Godzilla Death Corona. But that name is not going to fly anymore. So on digital products and reprints of Ikoria, we are going to have it named as Space Godzilla Void Invader. That means the first print run, the first boxes, the first booster packs you're going to crack will have Death Corona. And this is an uncommon card. So imagine getting the full art foil version of this card, the Godzilla Showcase version. Later on, it's going to be Space Godzilla Void Invader. And then, of course, then there's a plain old commoner version that's Void Beckoner. So that's an uh, interesting reveal that they had to do today as well. Not just the fun stuff, but they had to say right away, OK, everyone, we're living in this type of world. Sorry about that. We made this card months ago. We printed it a while ago. We can't recall them. Uh, but future cards will be different. And lastly, one more OMG to respond to is Lutri, the spellcaster. Not only are we getting an extremely cute elemental otter, which is legendary, this has already been auto banned in Commander. Lutri, the fastest banned card ever. 
So we get an adorable otter elemental companion, and it's already been banned by the the commander the, the commander rules team. We know you've already seen companion and especially Lutri. Head over to the official website for more details. The short version is that Lutri will be banned. The end. So what does this cute little uh, possible companion commander do? Okay, companion. Each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. Again, I wish they had worded it as each non-land card in your starting deck must have a different name. If you do companion, you must have the stipulation. I wish they should have. They would have named uh, worded it like that. Okay, so everything has to have a different name. Uh, that's kind of like commander already. This has flash, so you can flash it in for three mana total as a three two. When Lutri enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets. So basically, the rules committee is saying that this seems to be like, okay, here's a brand new card out of the 100. It's in a different zone. It feels like an auto-include in is it? It's going to be way too weird for a commander. Uh, Auto-band right away. So, uh, yep, this is this is that. Now, I play a lot of casual commander and we do what we want mostly, but obviously for CEDH or others that take it a lot more seriously, uh, yeah, this is uh, auto-include now. Uh, auto-include perhaps, auto-ban as well. But I guess uh, there's no time to uh, bland fa uh, ban Flash Hulk. Anyway, so here's the uh, here's the last thing to react to right here. A lot of interesting things. We have a banned card in Commander. We have an unfortunately named card. We have what's inside of all of the collector boosters. We have a uh, sort of a lore to the various planes. We have the various new mechanics that are appearing. I think this Mutate one is going to be the most interesting one. And then, of course, the trailer and Godzilla officially in the world of magic. So tell me what you think there in the comments. Home runs, uh, foul, base strikeout, whatever the terms are. What did you think about the reveals of Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths? We will. We just got these reveals. We're gonna see how things play out as we get more cards. I think it's kind of cool. More cards, more magic, more good, as I like to say. Bad grammar aside. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Defeat the Minotaur. Get the key. Press the notification bell to be alerted to everything that I do. And consider joining the Patreon. Patreon.com/vmcampos. I do deck techs, sideboard guides. Uh, big money card upgrades and so forth, Planeswalker decks, all that good stuff. You can access that for $1. If you go to the $2 range, you'll actually unlock more stuff. But even with a free follow, I would appreciate that, and you'll be alerted to all of the stuff that I do in the world of magic. This has been VM Campos, and I will see you in Ikoria.